Hi everyone, Henry from Enterprise DNA here. In this video, we will be learning how to use Power Automate to create chat functions within Teams. What we'll be going through will simply scratch the surface of what's possible when you integrate Power Automate within Teams to create very powerful automations. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with a quick demo of what the solution looks like. All right, let's go through a use case. So I have my teams open over here. I'm in a conversation with myself, obviously, and Brad, Jamie, and Luke. And in this conversation, I had basically messaged them saying, hi all, could you send a personalized letter to this customer, to their office, and customize to their brand? His name is Xander. So I'm basically referring to a specific customer, and then Brad Pitt replies, sure, could you tell me his office and his brand? Now, what we could do is we could simply go to our customers list and go to that customer whose name is Xander and try to find their office or brand using this list. Or Brad Pitt could, could go and do that. But we do this so many times over Teams that we want to do this in an automated function. So what I've done here is I've created a function within Power Automate in Teams where I can simply just type in backslash get, and then the name of the actual customer, in this case, it's Xander. And what Power Automate is doing in the background is it's picking this up, it's searching that list, and then it returns, as we can see over here, the name, the office, and the brand. And now I can do this for any customer, right? So I can go over here, for example, and do the same thing for Alice. So over here we can see Alice is from Miami and she drives a BMW. I can go over here, type in get Alice, and it'll get me the exact same information. And what's nice about this is that this is a function within Teams, which means that no matter if I'm in a chat with Brad, Jamie, or Luke, or if I'm in a chat with someone else, or if I'm in a channel chat, it doesn't matter. Even if I'm in a meeting, right? In a meeting with external people, I can still use this function. Hey, you want me to tell you for a particular customer what office and brand they're in? I got you. I could just click get, type in the customer's name, and boom, I get their details right away. So that's really the use case. And now let's see how we can do that on uh, Power Automate. Okay, so I've just flipped to my Power Automate page. Now, usually I would go and build a Power Automate flow with you, but since we want to keep this video short, I've actually already built out the entire flow myself. And what's better is if I go through each and single piece of this flow to show you what each function really does, and you can build it yourself afterwards. Now, I'm assuming you have certain knowledge already of Power Automate, but if you don't, um, there are a lot of videos on this channel about Power Automate, and there's an entire course available as well. Our trigger for this Power Automate is when a new chat message is added. Now, this triggers for every single chat message, no matter what. Now, that can be a big deal because you, for example, don't want this to get sent out or triggered automatically every single time for every single chat. You want a specific use case. So our use case that we used, for example, is the backslash get. That's what activates our Power Automate flow. And what happens is, well, we first initialize a variable that we'll go through later, but it's not required for now. But what we do then is we first get message details over here, okay? Now, the reason why you want message details is because the dynamic content that's produced by this piece over here does not produce the actual message contents, which is annoying. It doesn't actually produce the actual message itself. It produces things like the message ID, who sent the message, um, when did they send the message, what channel did they send the message in, and so on and so forth. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get message details and it, in order to use this function, you need to provide the message ID, which we get from over here as well as where that message happened, which is the message conversation ID, which is another dynamic content that you get from here, okay? Now, what that returns is a big set of JSON object, okay? And you have to parse through it twice. 
And the reason you have to parse through it twice, let me show you an example. Let me uh, leave this over here for now. And let me go to, uh, let me actually make a copy of this so we can go back. So we'll go back to edit mode, but then what's useful here to actually see what the JSON looks like is to actually go through a run flow and see the JSON output. There we go, okay. Let's go over here to actually look at a JSON output. And we're back here, we should be editing our flow here, whatever it opens up, okay, perfect. So now we're in this step over here. So if we go to apply to each, parse or get message details, we can look at the output of this. Show raw outputs. And this is all the details related to that message. <laughs> Look at how much Teams <laughs> it captures for your message. It captures everything, the headers, it captures the body, the e-tag of your message, everything. Now, what this is a really big JSON object. What we really care about is if you look inside the body, if you look inside the body of the body, weird, I know. And if you look inside the uh, content, this is what we need over here, okay? Now, what I'll do is I'll go to another uh, one where we can actually look at the w get because that's useful. And we should see the backslash get Alice, for example, if we, if we do that. So if I go into here, get message details, show raw outputs. Over here, there we go, content, get, uh, backslash get Alice. I think this is a forward slash, but it doesn't matter. I'll just call it slash. Um, one thing to also note is that you have these paragraph labels here. That's because technically a team's message is HTML formatted. So if you don't do anything, you still get these P paragraph symbols at the beginning and end. But anyways, what we care about is inside body, inside body again, content. This is what we need. So when we go back to our flow, we first parse the JSON, okay? And, uh, you know, again, I don't have time to go through exactly how we do this, but uh, what you should do is you should click generate from sample, you insert this entire JSON into it, and then it automatically creates the schema for you. The good thing is that this creates the dynamic content at the first level. So it creates the dynamic content, for example, for status code, headers, body, right? Uh, this body over here, so on and so forth. But it doesn't create the dynamic content for two levels down. So content type content, plain text content. This is what we actually need. So then what we have to do is we have to parse the JSON again. And the content over here is actually the output of this guy, right? And again, the reason we're doing this is because this is two hierarchies down. So we first parse the first level hierarchy and then we uh, and then we um, parse the second level hierarchy, which is this guy. So over here, we can see that's much simpler. It's just the content type and the content. We didn't really require the third variable because we want the content type and the content. So now that we've done this, we have the content type and content as dynamic content for us to use in uh, the following steps. Now this parse JSON might be confusing, but there's lots of videos on it if you're confused, but it's something you have to do because get message details output, unfortunately is a JSON object. It's not like a set of dynamic content or anything like that. Okay. We then go to our condition. We then have a condition statement that says only run this flow if the content, right? If the message starts with get. Otherwise, or it's really forward slash get. Otherwise, don't do anything. And that makes sense because we don't want this message to run every, or we don't want the flow to run every single time, right? Okay. The next thing we're going to do over here is if this is yes, then we're going to set a variable called first name. Now, this is a very complex formula. You can see it over here. Um, but what I can do perhaps is I can open up a notepad and kind of go through what I'm actually doing here. Um, but at the end of the day, it's very simple string manipulation. Uh, there we go, there it is. And let me put it in a notepad here. Let me try and zoom in, perfect. Okay, 
So the first thing we do is we use the slice function, okay? The slice function takes three arguments. The first argument it takes is a string. In our case, this string is over here. Uh, this guy, you know, this string. <laughs> uh, p get Alice p, okay? The next thing it takes is it takes a starting, uh, it takes an integer which represents the starting character, okay? And then finally, uh, it takes the, the last argument is the ending character. It's really a substring or a slice of a string. So we tell it, okay, I'm giving you the full thing over here, get Alice. I want you to start at the nth index of whatever there's the first or really, yeah, wherever there's the first space. So it finds the integer where there's the first space, which is right over here, right? At this index. And then, whoops, and then it adds one to it. You can see the add function here. Okay, so it basically tells Power Automate, take the string and start over here, right before the name. And then the ending, or the last argument is where should the string end? And I'm saying it should end at the full length of that string minus four. So basically start over here and end wherever the end is minus four letters. So one, two, three, four. So basically that function or expression will return Alice. And that's exactly what I need, okay? So what we can do over here is go back into our condition variable. Uh, let's me go back over here. So first name is really now Alice, right? If I do backslash or sorry, forward slash get Xander, it's Xander. It really depends on what you put after the, the get, okay? After that, things are very simple. We then ask Power Automate to then search customers list, which is our SharePoint list, for where first name is equal to Quote, first name, quote. Or in this case, it would be where field zero is equal to Alice. Field zero, for example, is what first name is over here. Okay, it's called first name, but this is just your display name. Remember, the, what the actual field is called, you can find through SharePoint. Okay, and then what it does is for each item that's returned where this matches, so if there's multiple Alice's, for example, this will still work you want to post a message in the chat or channel, basically saying the, uh, with the name, the first name, the last name, the office, office value, and the brand. Okay, that is the entire workflow. And this you know, probably took me from inception until the very end, about 30 minutes to create. I think 20 minutes of it was getting this function right because it is a bit complex. But this is very useful because you can use this to create any sort of automated function in Teams that you want. And that's very powerful. For example, what I've seen people use this for is uh, it's very annoying sometimes to tell people the same information. Let's say if you need to tell people or people ask you, hey, how do I get in touch with the HR? Hey, how do I do my expense reports? How do I do this? Well, you can just have a function that automates these things for you so that if you're in any chat, you can just say, for example, um, resource space, and then maybe you put an expense report. And what that does is it basically goes through a Power Automate workflow, it finds the instructions in a list corresponding to expense, and then messages it out to this particular chat. So you can use these Teams chat functions with Power Automate very powerfully, and I really recommend you guys all do this because it's, first of all, freaking awesome. And then the other thing here is that, you know, it's, I mean, it's a great way to show off your Power Automate and Teams capabilities. And you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with it as well. You can have, for example, flows where you basically give someone a countdown, where basically you write backslash or forward slash countdown, and then it sends a message every five minutes to them until they do what you're asking them to do or until you manually shut off the flow or until you manually message them again. Right, so there's really fun things that you can do over here. Again, this is scratching the surface, but I hope you take this and really you know, project it forward. Well, that's it for me. Uh, thank you for listening. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. 
If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.